In Glide, rows in our tables become items in lists and collections. Each item can have properties, which are the columns in the table. For example, a team member can have a name, a number, an email, or an image. But what if a team member has a manager or an office? Well, each of these things has its own set of properties. In other words, the item has another item. And when this is the case, we can use a relation column to link these two tables together to create a structural relationship and then use this for many, many different things. For example, you could use relations to display a list of items that belong in a category, show all the employees that a manager is in charge of, populate a choice component with only the items that are currently available, look up individual values from other tables, and much, much more. In this video, we're going to look at the basics of working with relations. We're going to look at single relations, multiple relations, and using row IDs for unique values. Before you add a relation column, you need to have matching data. In other words, you need to have two tables, each with a column that has matching data in it that we can use for the link. For example, if you're relating team members to locations, the team members table should have a column with the title of that team member's location. Or if you're matching inventory with its category type, then the inventory table should have a column with the category type in it for every item. It's this matching value that then is used in the relation column. For example, in the team members table here, we can add a relation column and then relate items where the value in the location column here matches the value in the name column in the locations table. We can now see that for every row, a row in the locations table has been brought back. Now in our app, we can add a collection component and choose this relation as the source. Because this is just a single relation, in other words, there's only one record being brought back, this collection shows only one item. So now on each employee's page, we can click through to their location. So that's single relations, but you can also have multiple relations where multiple rows are brought back. In this inventory app, we want to be able to browse inventory items by their category. But when we visit a category and add a collection, there's no way yet of pulling in the inventory items that belong to this category because we haven't created a relation. To do this, we need to go to the data editor. In the data editor, there is a table for inventory items and a table for inventory categories. But at the moment, these tables aren't connected. If we go to the categories table, what we want to see here is all the inventory items that belong in each category connected or being pulled in for each of these rows. So let's do this now with the relation column. We already have a column we can use for our relation in each table. In the inventory table, there is a text column with the name of each item's category. And of course, in the categories table, the name column is itself the name of the category. So these are the two columns that we're going to use in the relation. In the category table, we'll create a relation column and then use the name column to relate to the category column in the inventory table. Importantly here, we need to check match multiple to make this a multiple relation. And now we can see all of our items being brought back. Inside of each cell, we can even browse these by clicking and scrolling to the right. You can even change the values here. To see these relations in our app, let's go to our categories tab and select the data source for the collection we added earlier. And now we can see that relation. And after we add it, we can see that every category shows the inventory items that belong to it. Now, when you're learning relations and just getting to learn them for the first time, it's really important to just use simple values like the ones that we've shown here. However, in production ready apps, it's really important to use unique values that don't change. For example, let's say that we're relating employees to their manager using the manager's name. Now, this might work in the beginning, right? It would let us show the manager on each team member's profile. But what if someone with the exact same name joined the team. Well, we'd start seeing two managers on people's profiles, so this would break the relation. Or another scenario, let's say we had a relation connecting products and their categories, and then one day we changed the name of a category. Well, then all of our relations for that category would break. If we want to have stable relationships that don't break, we need to make sure that the value that we're matching with is unique and that we're never in danger of changing it. Glide's row ID column makes this whole process really, really easy by automatically adding a unique ID for every row in your table. All you need to do is make sure that you're using that as the matching value in your relation and your relations won't break. Now, in the beginning, this is a little strange as you're not using these human readable names that we're used to, but with a little time, you'll get used to it. If you can think about it in exactly the same way as we've done so far. 
Now, what we've shown here is just the basics of using relations, but there's much more that you can build on top of relations as your foundation. As you're building, if you find yourself wanting to create much more complex relations with filtering and sorting, then we recommend checking out the query column. For information on all this and more, check out our docs over at glideapps.com learn.